To all so-called Negroes, this is lesson number four of our true history, the world's best kept secret according to the Bible. Call your children and friends and sit down in a comfortable seat, listen with an open mind, and discuss these facts which you have never been taught before. This information will be shocking to you, but it is true nevertheless. It is up to you to accept the truth or reject it. It is also up to God, Yahweh, to accept you or reject you. Listen carefully to these words of Yahweh, my brothers and sisters. Those who refuse to listen are going to suffer worse than any people on earth. Look carefully at these words of Yahweh. Why? Because your life and the future of your children is at stake. Destruction is at your very door. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 9 says, And Yahweh said, Go and tell his people, the so-called Negro, Hear ye indeed, meaning listen carefully to the truth that I am speaking. Though you hear the truth, yet you understand not. And you have eyes to see and look carefully at this message, but you perceive not. Why do you not perceive? It is because you have been blinded to the truth and how to search out the truth. The enemy has blinded us with 400 years of slavery. He has made us into a foolish people, as it is written in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 22, which says, For my people is foolish. They have not known me, meaning we have not known Yahweh since slavery. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Our people are so blind and ignorant about the enemy's plans to destroy us that it is truly a shame. Our hope in the enemy's religion is also all in vain. We are so confused that we love our enemy while we hate each other. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 25 says, We lie down in our shame and our confusion covereth us. For we have sinned against the Lord Yahweh, our God. We and our fathers, from our youth even until this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord Yahweh, our God. We have always been warned by Yahweh, our God, when something was about to happen to us for rejecting him. Although we have ears, we act as if we are deaf. Ezra chapter 9 verse 7 says, since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass until this day, and for our iniquities and sins have we, our king and our priests, been delivered into the hands of the kings of the land, to the sword, to captivity, slavery here in America, both physical and mental until this day, and to a spoil and to confusion of face, as it is this day. Think about the power of this scripture, my dearly beloved brother and sister Hebrews, my people, the so-called blacks of America, the Afro-Americans. We must face the fact that we have enemies. We act as if we are blinded to this fact as a people. Our enemies are dedicated to keeping us ignorant. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 10 says, Make the people's heart the minds of this people fat and lazy and to make their ears heavy and slow to understand and shut their eyes and make them blind to the truth lest the so-called Negroes the so-called blacks of America see the truth with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert to Yahweh and be healed and saved from our enemies and their plans to destroy us don't ever forget that the birth control law, abortion, that is really murder, pill, hysterectomy, tubulolectomy, visectomy, tube tying, police brutality, alcohol, drugs, and unemployment are directed against us, the so-called blacks, to destroy us. Although we point out the pure truth to our people, they act as if they cannot understand. No matter how our people act, 
we must still go to them. Acts chapter 28, verses 26 and 27 says, Go unto this people, the so-called Negroes, the so-called blacks of America, and say, Hearing the truth, you shall hear and shall not understand. And seeing the enemy's plans to destroy you, you shall see and not perceive. For the heart, the mind of this people is waxed gross and ignorant. And their eyes, their ears are dull of hearing. Their eyes have closed. Lest the so-called blacks should see with their eyes through their righteous leaders and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and their mind and should be converted to the truth of Yahweh our God. And I, Yahweh, should heal and save the so-called blacks from their enemies. The white government of America is in a crisis, deep, 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 deep trouble. It is my duty as a servant of Yahweh, our God, to warn you about all the things that are taking place which will affect your mind and your future. This is why we are told in John chapter 16, verse 13, that the spirit of truth would guide you into all truth and show you things to come. Now, this is the difference between those who represent our true and living God, Yahweh, and the false lying preachers and leaders who never warn you about the things which are coming upon you to destroy you. Those false leaders who love our enemies are guilty of trying to put out the light of truth with their lips. Psalm 31, verse 18, gives them a warning, which says, Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. I must take the time at this point and remind you that the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi and the book of Revelation is all written by Hebrews, our black forefathers. The New Testament is written by our enemies who seek to deceive you, and it is their effort to write themselves into eternal life and to deceive you, the so-called blacks, into believing that God loves everybody regardless of their evil and cares about everybody regardless of their evil. Though we have already proven to you that this is nothing but a lie in lesson number three. Look up Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 7. Don't ever forget that God is too smart to contradict himself. There are no contradictions in the Hebrew book or in our history of the Old Testament or in Revelations. The only time you run into inconsistencies in the New Testament is where the enemy seeks to deceive you and not by the authority of our great, good, and terrible black God, Yahweh. If you go and study the Old Testament, you will observe quickly that it says <clears throat> things like, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, or, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, or, we find a record of Yahweh himself speaking to us, his people, Israel. Not so in the New Testament. So keep this in mind. And to let you know how foolish we are, let us look at Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 19, which says, And it shall come to pass when ye shall say, Wherefore doth the Lord Yahweh our God all these things unto us? Then thou shalt answer them, Like as ye have forsaken me, and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours meaning slavery here in America. The reason we're suffering as we do here in America is because we have turned our backs on Yahweh, our God. If you want to enjoy heaven on earth while you live, return to your God, whose name is Yahweh. And Yahweh warned our forefathers in verses 20 and 23, saying, Declare this in the house of Jacob to the so-called blacks of America and publish it in Judah to the so-called blacks of America, saying, 
Hear now this, O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not, which have ears and hear not. Fear ye not me, saith the Lord Yahweh. Will ye not tremble at my presence, which have placed the sand for the bound of the sea by a perpetual decree, that it cannot pass it? And though the waves thereof toss themselves, yet can they not prevail? Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it? But this people, the so-called blacks of America, have a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone astray. Now verse 31 of chapter 5 here describes us perfectly, which says, The prophets and preachers prophesy falsely, and the priests bear rule by their means. And my people love to have it so. And what will you do in the end thereof? This means, dearly beloved, we love for these lying preachers to lie to us. We love deceit and lies. But now you are coming face to face with the truth. Those who accept the truth will receive the reward of our great, good, and terrible black God, Yahweh. What a blessing. What a heavenly reward it is. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 2, also speaks about our people here in America, the so-called Negroes, who are still in captivity spiritually and mentally. And it says, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. Yes, dearly beloved, we know the kind of people you are and the problem we have in getting you to listen to the truth, because you have been reared to love evil by our enemies. But it is obvious that our enemies are in serious trouble, and just as sure as our enemy is in serious trouble and you depend upon the enemy, you too are even in more serious trouble. And it is my duty to warn you about the trouble that is about to befall you. The reason this knowledge is so shocking to you is because I am teaching you things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world, according to Matthew chapter 13, verse 35. When you read the Bible on your own, you are unable to understand it. For this reason, you need a teacher from God, Yahweh. Your pitiful condition was described in Matthew chapter 13, verses 14 through 16, which reads, And in the so-called blacks of America is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart and mind is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed against the truth, lest at any time they should see the truth with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart and mind, and should be converted to the truth. And I, Yahweh, should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, believers, for they shall see, and your ears, for they shall hear. And to explain how blessed you are, take a look at verse 17, which says, For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which you see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you are right now hearing, and have not heard them. Yes, dearly beloved brothers and sisters, this lets us know how fortunate we are who understand what I am teaching. I must warn you that the man is causing more and more of our people to be unemployed, hoping that this will lead to street demonstrations and eventually into riots. They already have plans to suspend our civil liberty and institute nationwide search and seizure operations and arrest us wholesale in the ghettos. They have national rifle clubs, association, gun clubs. They own every kind of gun that they produce and manufacture with enough 
bullets for every man, woman, and child on the earth and those that will be born over the next 20 years. And yet they are going to declare you a criminal for owning a gun in your home, in the ghetto. The only gun you'll end up left with is one in plastic buried deep in the ground that you can get to in an emergency. And they have plans to distribute census cards to you which would bear a photograph of you, the letter of the district in which you live, your house and street number, and a letter designating your home city. Your ability to move freely from place to place is going to be seriously curtailed. You are going to be subject to arrest and your home searched without warrant, just as it is done in Israel and Palestine today, for no reason than the fact that they are suspicious of you. And they are automatically suspicious of you because you are black. You are the chosen people of God. You are the original Hebrew spoken of in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. They know the promises of rulership to you from Yahweh himself. Your lying preachers and ignorant leaders have led you to believe that things are getting better for you here in America. But John had knowledge of this as well as the prophet Isaiah in John chapter 12, verses 38 through 40, describing that you would not understand these things. And these verses say, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord Yahweh, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord Yahweh been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, the enemy of truth has blinded the eyes of the so-called blacks of America and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart and mind and be converted, and I should heal them. That's a pitiful condition to be in, to be in trouble, and then have your mind hardened against the only solution. As you can see from what I'm trying to point out to you, the knowledge of Yahweh is practical. It is salvation, and not, as our lying preachers have said to us, spirit only, but your very physical life depends on your having knowledge of the plans of God, Yahweh, and having knowledge of the plans of our enemy. When understood, the Old Testament gives us a warning of every single thing that will happen to us if we disobey the will of our God, Yahweh. Our blind, dumb, ignorant preachers have not taught us how to read the Old Testament with understanding, nor have they taught us to whom it applies. They have taught us that it applies to other nations when the Old Testament applies to the so-called black men of America. We are the children of Israel, spoken of in the Old Testament. The Old Testament is a history of your and my forefathers. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 14 and 15 says, but the so-called black people of America's minds were blinded. For until this day remains the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. A veil means our minds were covered and the truth and the understanding of it has been hidden from you. But even until this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart, meaning there is a covering up on your mind that keeps you from understanding. Verse 16, Nevertheless, when you shall turn to your Lord Yahweh, the veil shall be taken away. This means that when you accept this message, as I am bringing it to you from our great, good, and terrible black God Yahweh, then and only then will you be able to understand and have an understanding heart, and you are understanding like never before in your life now because of the trouble coming up on us. There is no freedom for you in America under the man. I am warning you now that every phase of your life is about to come under government control. Gasoline rationing in the past is a sign, which means martial law. As it is foretold in Revelation chapter 13, verses 14 through 18, which reads, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, 
and he spake as a dragon, and he exercises all the power of the first beast before him, and causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, meaning the enemy is able to explode atomic bombs, and it is used to deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. I've already given you this knowledge in the pamphlet did you know regarding the image of the beast and the computer and he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six, meaning six, six, six. Here, this wisdom lets us know, dearly beloved, that when you read about a beast in the Bible, that this is not talking about a four-footed animal like a horse or a cow. But if you have wisdom and understanding, you understand that this is talking about a man or a certain nation of people and you had better understand which nation it is talking about those of us who are into the knowledge awake and aware know that this is talking about our enemy for he is the one who is in control or seeming control of the earth's activities at this time we know that our great good and terrible black god Yahweh is ultimately and really in control but our enemy was given a certain length of time to rule this earth. Therefore, he has the power to deceive the blind, deaf, dumb, and ignorant people on the earth and cause them to think that he has the power and that there is nothing in the earth greater than he. And for this reason, there are many of our ignorant people who worship the enemy as God and feel that there is no hope outside of our enemy. We are bringing you the truth for you to understand that there is hope for you outside of this evil, wicked man who is in an enemy not only to us, but to our God, and that our God Yahweh is going to destroy our enemy. It is important for you to understand that this beast referred to here in the Bible means a violent man, and this violent man and his purpose is to cause much violence and destruction among the peoples of the earth. And this can be verified in chapter 11 in Revelation, verse 7, which says, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And if you don't know where this is going to take place first, then verse 8 says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. If you believe in your preacher so much, then you need that dumb, ignorant dog to explain these mysteries to you here in Revelation, because we can see here that blood is involved. Your life's blood is involved. And if you expect to survive, you had better know the truth. These lying preachers have caused you to make a great error in thinking and believing that heaven is somewhere else rather than here on earth. I am going to give you two proofs that the kingdom of God, Yahweh, is on earth forever. And forever is a long time. Daniel chapter 7 verse 22 says, And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. 
Revelations chapter 21 lets us know that the idea of the spiritual heaven away from this earth is simply a lie. Verse 1 of Revelation chapter 21 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no more sea. So here we see, dearly beloved, that even if this earth were destroyed, we would still have an earth to live on, for God Yahweh would simply just give us a new one. We certainly need a new one, considering how this man, Satan the devil, has polluted and poisoned and destroyed just about everything on our earth as it is now. God Almighty Yahweh is going to dwell with us forever on earth. Verse 3 of Revelation chapter 21 says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Yahweh himself shall be with them and be their God. God himself is going to dwell with us in the flesh and blood upon the physical earth as we have just proven from these scriptures. Read Revelation chapter 21 for yourself and see that this is dealing with a physical reality. The true servants of our God Yahweh have been warning us for years that there would be a rationing system of gasoline and oil in this country. Those of us living today see that a rationing system has been formulated through the government. And this rationing of gasoline can take place at any time through the use of certain kinds of numbers. We know that the number 666 is being instituted and the Social Security has been redone so that the first three numbers are 666 as you have been warned in the pamphlet titled, Did You Know? From this point on, my brothers and sisters, you can watch this prophecy fall in line. Because so much industry depends on oil, it can end up in total unemployment, which in turn would fulfill Isaiah chapter 19, verses 1 through 15, which is a prophecy of America. In this particular case, Egypt is a prophecy of America, and it is read with this in mind, and it reads, The burden of America. Behold, the Lord Yahweh rideth upon a swift cloud, and shall come into America, and the idols of America shall be moved at his presence, and the heart of America shall melt in the midst of it. And I will set the Americans against the Americans, and they shall fight every one against his brother, as we are seeing happen before our very eyes here in America today with strikes of various industries, shutting them down effectively. Greed and every one against his neighbor, city against city, seeking who can get the most tax dollars to give away to their rich friends, and kingdom against kingdom. And the spirit of America shall fail in the midst thereof, and I will destroy the council thereof, as we are able to witness in the Congress and the presidential administration of this country. Confusion reigns. Who is going to be appointed? and those that are appointed being immoral. And some saying that if, if every uh, congressman or ruler in government uh, were busted for uh, being immoral and shacking up, there'd be no government in America. That tells us what kind of people are ruling this country. And they shall seek to the idol and to the charmers and to them that have familiar spirits and to the wizards, as uh, President Reagan was accused of going to the astrologers. And the Americans will I give over into the hand of a cruel lord or ruler. And a fierce king shall rule over them, saith the Lord Yahweh, the Lord of hosts. And the water shall fail from the sea, and the river shall be wasted and dried up. Yes, famine is on the way in this country. And they shall turn the rivers far away. They're already polluted and poisoned, unfit to drink from. And the brooks of defense shall be emptied and dried up. The reeds and the flags shall wither. And we can see right now with their discussion of salt treaties and methods of defense against destruction that they know is coming. Their plan of faltering. The paper reads by the brooks, by the mouth of the brooks, 
shall wither, be driven away, and be no more. The fishers also shall mourn, all fishermen in the seas they shall mourn, and all they that cast angle into the brooks shall lament, and they that spread nets upon the waters shall languish. Moreover, they that work in fine flax, and they that weave networks, the workers shall be confounded, and they shall be broken in the purposes thereof, all that make sluices and ponds for fish. Surely the princes of Zoan are fools. The counsel of the wise counselors of America is become brutish. How shall ye say unto the rulers of America, I am the son of the wise, the son of ancient kings? Where are they? Where are your wise men, America? And let them tell thee now, and let them know what the Lord Yahweh of hosts has proposed upon America. The princes of Zoan are become fools. The princes of North are deceived. They have also seduced America, even they that are the stay of the tribes thereof. The Lord Yahweh hath mingled a perverse spirit thereof, and they have caused America to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Neither shall there be any work you hear me? Neither shall there be any work for America. The silly people are striking themselves out of work, which the head or the tail, branch or rush may do. That means the rulers and the dependent so-called blacks of America will be without work. That is happening in your face now, and it shall come upon you swiftly. Now, did you get the prophecy of the word of God Yahweh here? There shall be no work for either the head or the tail. Now, all of us here in America know that our enemy is the head. Even a fool knows that the so-called black man of America is the tail. Both of you shall be without work. The tail can't work without the head anyway, because they depend upon the head for jobs. Where do we go from here in, is the question. Malachi chapter 3 verse 7 gives us a good answer which says, Even from the days of your fathers, the so-called blacks of America are gone away from my ordinances, my laws, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord Yahweh of hosts. But you say, Where when shall we return? Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 gives us a good answer and it says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge I will also reject thee that thou shalt be no priest to me seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God Yahweh I will also forget thy children so our destruction here in America is because of the lack of knowledge of our God Yahweh the God of your and my forefathers to be restored you need this knowledge restored. Hosea chapter 4 verse 1 makes this plain which says, Hear the word of the Lord Yahweh, you children of Israel, the so-called blacks of America. For the Lord Yahweh hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of God Yahweh in the land. The God of your and my forefathers, Yahweh, is displeased with you, Israel, the so-called blacks of America. We are in trouble today only because we have rebelled against our God, Yahweh. Our great, good, and terrible black God, Yahweh, is the creator of the heavens and all that there is, seen and unseen. Our great, good, and terrible black God, Yahweh, is warning you, his people, the so-called blacks here in America, that great evil is about to befall America and you since you live here and depend upon America instead of depending on God. You choose to depend on men rather than God. Wake up. Look around you. It is clear that America is no longer the great giant in the world as she was just a few years ago. Her money is now worthless. Savings and loans are closing by the thousands. Banks are failing all across America. 
and the money is becoming more worthless day by day. You work longer and harder for less money that buys less. The term used today is inflation. Inflation simply means that your money is buying less and less for the hours that you work. You are no longer able to buy the same amount of groceries today that you were able to buy for the same amount of dollars one year ago. It is only going to get worse, not better. You had better hurry up and make up your mind to follow the God of our forefathers. It's not getting better for you even if you sell drugs. Look at the jail. Almost a million of our young men are behind bars for the next 20 years, unable to have children, unable to be the head of our households, unable to take care of our women and children. They're unable to have any behind bars. All they're able to have behind bars is homosexual faggots, gays, and come out with AIDS and spread that in your homes. You had better hurry up and make up your mind to follow the God of our forefathers. You had better hurry up and run from the enemy and flee from your enemy, which are being destroyed day by day. America is in deep trouble, according to radio and television and according to individual conversation, talk shows, and according to conversations between government officials concerning their problems of trying to find a way to peace for their people and a way to find stoppage of the fall of their money market and unemployment and a stoppage to the revolutions going on within and without between the satisfied and the dissatisfied and to find a way to be able to go eat and to keep the hungry eating to find shelter for the homeless. They're trying to find a way from his own labor here in America. The hungry is in trouble in America. We find that pacification and inter solutions are offered, but it does not satisfy the people. Look in the countries around the world where food riots are going on. Look in the countries around the world that's rioting right now. Even in the year 1989, prices have been raised in countries and revolution is taking place. Where do we go from here? We must fly to our great, good, and terrible black God, Yahweh, who is going to continue to punish us and will continue to punish America until she lets us go. This country, America, must let my people, the so-called blacks of America, go back to our own God, Yahweh, and back to our own land. There is no other place on this earth for you to go except hell, unless you turn to our great, good, and terrible black God, Yahweh. There is no place for America to go except hell and total destruction, unless she turns from her wicked ways and hears my message from my father, Yahweh. Our book, which was written by our black forefathers, the Old Testament, from Genesis to Malachi, and the book of Revelation, are all full of warning and knowledge of how to be saved from the wrath of this devil and from the wrath of our God, Yahweh. There is no way to be saved without this knowledge. Without the correct knowledge of God, Yahweh, there is no hope for you unless you turn to our God, Yahweh. You, my dearly beloved brothers and sisters, will have to suffer Hosea chapter 4, verse 2 and 3, which says, By swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. Therefore shall the land of America mourn, and every one that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and the fowls of heaven. Yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. That's suffering. There is nothing but suffering for you during this great fall of America, who is also written in the Bible under the name of Babylon. And we will be discussing this truth in lesson number seven. Babylon the Great is falling. We will teach you the secret and the mystery and the understanding of Babylon. This ends lesson number four of our true history, the world's best kept secret. Yes, dearly beloved, it is time for us to wake up and stand up and accept 
our great, good, and terrible black God, Yahweh. He has the riches in store for us according to Revelation chapter 21. And we are to have our names written in heaven to inherit the new Jerusalem, the new heaven, and the new earth. Yes, we are God's chosen people. I thank you for reading and listening to this message. Always remember, never forget, that our motto is one God, one mind, one love, and one action. Yours truly, Yahweh bin Yahweh, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 16. I thank you, and I love you eternally. Come and see me soon. Loading. One moment, please. The new Yahweh bin Yahweh website now offers the latest in streaming technology to aid you in your study of the laws and teachings of Yahweh bin Yahweh. Visit YahwehBinYahweh.com and learn about the Tetragrammaton, the meaning of the crucifixion, and how to keep the Sabbath. YahwehBinYahweh.com is your home for truth and insight. Read about Operation Word War and how you can work to balance justice. Shalom.